The person in charge of decommissioning the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has revealed a possible new way to deal with the radioactive water stored there. Just let it evaporate. NHK World's Aki Shibuya has more on that. The amount of radioactive water at the plant continues to increase. We need to find a way to reduce it. Masuda and his team of 6,000 workers have struggled with the problem of contaminated water. Workers must constantly inject water into the crippled reactors to cool molten debris and then pump it out. Groundwater flowing into the reactor buildings adds to the problem. Executives with the plant's operator, TEPCO, have said they will continue storing the water on site. Masuda says evaporation is one of the options being discussed. Diluting the contaminated water and discharging it into the ocean has been discussed. But another option is evaporating the water. This method was used following the Three Mile Island nuclear accident in the U.S. Masuda's engineers and workers use purification equipment to remove most of the radioactive substance. But they can't remove it all. Local fishermen strongly oppose releasing water directly into the ocean. The evaporation method could be an acceptable alternative for them, although some experts say its environmental consequences are unclear. Handling contaminated water is just one aspect of the highly complex decommissioning process. Masuda believes that he'll need to rely on the international community for support. America, Italy, France. We'll be cooperating mainly with the United States, Britain, France and Russia. We're already getting help from people at nuclear-related facilities in these countries. We're learning how to decommission and shut down facilities and deal with contaminated soil. Masuda promised to share his knowledge in return. We will be open and transparent in sharing our current status, challenges, lessons, experience and areas where we need help. It is important to use the lessons and experience from Fukushima Daiichi for the improvement of nuclear safety worldwide. Masuda says he will do his best in proceeding with the decommissioning process. This town is located just about 10 kilometers away from the site of the meltdown. Since the disaster, it's been abandoned, and people are only allowed to enter during the daytime. There are many places in Fukushima that resemble the scenery. Bringing life back depends on Masuda's success. Aki Shibuya, NHK World, The operator Fukushima. of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has revealed a minor glitch. It says the reactor's cooling system was briefly halted Monday due to human error. Tokyo Electric Power Company says an alarm alerted staff that a water pump at the number three reactor shut down. An internal investigation found that a worker had hit the pump switch while checking instruments. A different pump resumed about an hour later. Utility officials say there were no major changes in radiation levels at the plant. There was a similar issue Sunday. Cooling operations temporarily stopped in pools holding special spent nuclear fuel after some valves opened. The Japanese government has decided to lift the ceiling for loans to the operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The fund's upper limit will be raised to $123 billion from the current $79 billion. The government now estimates the facility will end up costing Tokyo Electric Power Company more than $190 billion. Decommissioning the plant is expected to cost $70 billion. That's four times the original estimate. Compensation for farmers and others is seen rising to $70 billion from $47 billion. The cost of decontamination work and constructing intermediate storage facilities for contaminated soil and waste materials is likely to top $50 billion. The government plans to have TEPCO and other utilities pay back the interest-free loans. Those utilities include newcomers to the market following deregulation of the retail power business this year. The decision may result in bigger electricity bills 
for households. For the first time, Japan's government will use taxpayers' money to decontaminate the area around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Government officials tell NHK they'll use it to clean up some no-entry zones. Those are areas where radiation levels have remained high since the 2011 nuclear disaster. The plant's operator is currently paying for the cleanup, but the government now says it won't ask TEPCO to foot the bill for those zones because the utility has already compensated residents who left those areas. The cleanup is part of the government's effort to eventually rebuild so people will be able to live there again. The work is planned to start after Meanwhile, next April. Government officials estimate the cost of the Fukushima cleanup will be more than $50 billion. The figure includes money for decontamination work and building facilities to store contaminated soil and waste material. The new estimate is higher than the amount officials gave three years ago. They cited increases in personnel costs. They now say the cost of decontamination work in and around Fukushima will exceed $36 billion, and they say the construction of intermediate storage facilities for soil and other waste from the cleanup will require about $14 billion. The previous estimate had given these measures a combined price of $31 billion. Officials say the amount could increase even more. That's because the latest estimate excludes the cost of cleaning up areas where radiation levels remain too high for residents to return. Recovery efforts have been ongoing in Fukushima Prefecture following the 2011 nuclear disaster. Now Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has visited the prefecture to check on the region's progress. Abe went to the town of Kawamata where an evacuation order is expected to be lifted next March. While there, he tried fermented natto soybeans made using local products. The government will help people from areas where the evacuation order will be lifted, with housing and recovery. We're also going to deal with the no-entry zones. He said his cabinet will approve a plan before the end of the month to accelerate restoration efforts. He added this would include government funding for decontamination in no-entry zones. The International Olympic Committee has formally approved the venues for sports making their debut or comeback at the 2020 Tokyo Games. Members of Tokyo's organizing committee submitted their proposals Wednesday to the IOC board in Switzerland, and the board gave a thumbs up to all the picks. Yokohama Stadium will host baseball and softball games. One of Tokyo's biggest halls, known as the Budokan, will host the karate competition. Skateboarding and sport climbing events will take place at a temporary facility in the Japanese capital. And surfers will take to the waves in Chiba, just east of Tokyo. But the organizers haven't yet submitted details of their plan to hold baseball and softball preliminaries in Fukushima Prefecture. They said they're still trying to win the backing of the sport's governing body.